Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for today's message. Good morning. I am Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center. I'm inviting you to be with us for the next half an hour as we release the grace of God through the word of God to you. This is It's Your Date with Destiny, the television arm of our media ministry. And as you know, those who have been viewing uh, for years, at the end of every month, we come after you and ask you, what have you been doing towards fulfilling your resolution that you made with yourself and certainly with God that you would accomplish during this year, 2016. Have you gotten up yet to do it? Are you preparing to get it done? Somebody asked me recently, Apostle, what is the meaning of soon? Soon. How do you prepare for soon? I told them you, you need to be preparing all that you could put in place. And when God is ready, soon will hit you soon enough. But you do not want to sit down wondering how this will happen, when it will happen, wonder if it will happen, and when it does happen. Because you have not positioned yourself by way of preparation, soon passes by and you get nothing. Don't let that be your lament. Amen? And uh, for the entire month of February, we have been looking at excerpts of our School of the Prophets that was done in the last week of January, Level 2, Mentoring the Missing Link as Part 1 of Pursuing Dreams and Visions. And uh, it was held uh, in celebration of 30 years of God keeping us. Having called us in 1986, we could say in 2016, God is a keeper on my right hand. He keeps what we commit to him. So uh, for the next uh, while, I want you to take a look at our next installment as an excerpt from mentoring the missing link. Call up someone. Don't view this by yourself. Amen. May I tell you the man's responsibility and mandate for support is heavier than a woman's. Yeah, I feel to preach that. I feel to preach that. I tell you, Paul said, submitting yourselves one to another. And I'll let you know, submission doesn't mean to wipe your foot on your wife, nor on your husband. It does not mean to resist him. It does not mean to feel threatened. It means to support him. I feel that. Do I have a witness? I tell you. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Here, the realm of support or submission that Paul says the man must give. And he men, ye husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. But he didn't stop there. And gave himself for it in the Bible, quote unquote, on Good Friday, Jesus had to submit. Not my will, but thy will. And it was only when he submitted he got the right to give himself for the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is this what I'm driving at? <laughs> uh, so, so all those who didn't understand the submission thing, 
must now understand that in, in, in a relationship is a give and take. Is that what? Is a give and take. But what I found out is that you only take when you trust. I say you only take when you trust the person. If at all you have any kind of suspicion about anything, you put up a wall. And you say, I'm not taking that. In other words, I know I'm not submitting to that. And at a point in Jesus's march towards Calvary, he had to make a pit stop in Gethsemane to deal with that question of whether or not he really trusted his father. My father's will, his father said, come, let's test that. Let me see if you could take it. And when he was down in there, I found out that the devil wasn't inside there at all. The devil had gotten beaten up since in, um, in, um, in the wilderness and Satan had left him for a season. It's a long season. Satan can't tackle Jesus again at all until the final battle. Right now, it's only little demons doing the business, getting beat up. Watch this. Jesus was there battling with the submission principle. And he began to pray. Pet verses in combination that all intercessors use, thinking we could formularize answers to pray. You know many people fasting and praying now? Today's your 12. Ah, they finished already, man. Because mm. it's only 21. Which never begins on the first. Because on the first, we still have some ham from Christmas. But on the second, we start a fast. But few people who are fasting are submitting to God. There can be no impact, lasting impact in our prayers unless we are submitted to God. And Jesus was there praying using pet intercessory uh, uh, um, devices, verses, and said what? He says, Abba, Father. They say, once you call the name of God, you're good to go. Learn all the names of God, and when you're ready, call him, Jehovah this, Jehovah that, Jehovah that. He said, Abba, Father. When you were in Israel, they told us, Abba, Father, is the most endearing of all the, uh, 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 how, how you call it, um, phrases you, a, a child could use to greet the father. It melts the father's heart. But this is one father, Jehovah, that did not succumb to that. Abba Father, I know with you all things are possible. He used scripture. He used scripture because the scripture says with God, nothing. And Jesus himself said it in, in Matthew 25. With God, nothing shall be impossible. And when, when God was speaking to um, uh, uh, Sarah after she overheard him saying to her husband Abraham that by next year this season your wife will have child Sarah washing somewhere she said <laughs> played for long beat it <laughs> who is a man man <laughs> you never see me yet uh, everything I have gone south <laughs> and my, my husband he nothing rising again <laughs> yeah, he got you on UNC <laughs> And God just moved the curtain and said, Sarah, did you laugh? <laughs> no, no, me. <laughs> laugh, no. <laughs> then he said, is anything too hard for God to do? Ask your neighbor that for me with your prophetic finger, the index finger on your right hand. Is anything too hard for God to do? If God said it, he will do it. I'm telling you, so there's Jesus using formula and the father did not budge. Neither could he have come out of Gethsemane until he had 
submitted. So he had to open his mouth and say to his father, scratch that, delete that. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. In other words, Father, I submit myself to you. Father, I trust you enough to follow your instructions. And that's why mentoring is such an important principle. Because it doesn't matter what you went through in life. You have to learn to trust somebody. You cannot learn from who you don't trust. If you don't trust the person who is speaking to you, you are going to cut, dissect, dig out, tear apart every word. And you end up being in a place of rich revelation, but coming out of there poor in terms of your enrichment in life. And the worst thing is to be in a place where learning should be taking place. And everybody else is learning and you don't. Because you don't trust. Well, just as bones give strength and structure and support to your flesh, creating a full skeletal framework that stands strong and tall. And stones do the same to landforms. So does trust do to relationships. Because I'm not just talking about husband and wife. I'm talking about a setting like this. It's because, in fact, let me put it next week. When a, a person stands to teach, there is an assumed principle that the people who are sitting to hear from this person are willing to learn. Amen. But there's an even greater principle that they are trusting the teacher that what he is saying is the truth. If I come up here and I tell you all these things and you start to, to um, investigate and you realize that I'm really lying, then I think you will lay low from tomorrow night. You ain't coming. All them things you tell me, but all this vision we see and all kind of thing was a waste of time. Because I, I went and I investigated and when I find out, I, I see kind of person, I don't think, think, think just so, you know. I just go and find out and I went up by QRP and I find out and boy, half of them things we say ain't true and the next quarter, kind of cloudly, only about two things he say. It's true. Because I went and asked the brother and all. That's well. Uh, but let me tell you where the heart of trust comes from, which makes the mentoring thing so important. And I'm uh, also going to tell you where the heart of mistrust, distrust. Is it what distrust or mistrust? Mistrust. Well, when you hear trust, you know where it comes from? The failure of your primary mentor called daddy to truly impact your life positively. God puts fathers, male humans, in the lives of people to create the first relationship of trust between a leader and a follower, between a mentor and a mentee. If daddy is not there, whether by physical absence because of his inability to maintain a relationship or even by death, then that child grows up with a big daddy-sized hole inside here. And if the absence of daddy was negative, to the point that mommy keeps talking about how bad he was and if he's still alive, how bad he is. Then that daddy size hole is beginning to get very poisonous. 
Worse than that, if daddy is there and he's either cruel or totally indifferent to the raising of the child, then the daddy's size hole gets filled with anger and the mistrust of anybody else who wants to play daddy for them. And what is the result? We grow up in settings where daddy did not do a proper job. And we come into arenas where, based on the principle of human interaction, there must be a designated leader. You cannot have any arena in which you cannot pinpoint the leader. Once a person is appointed or accepted as the leader of that arena, whether male or female, because the main difference between the male and the female, whom God never called woman, God called her help. No, not help me. You see, more people always say that help me, and the way they pronounce me is like me, all they're thinking about is sex. Hello. It's helper. The original language did not say help, it said helper. Meet to his need or suitable, adaptable, complementary, completing the man. So all the ladies who are not married yet, do the four step test. Can I adapt myself to him? and his lifestyle is what he, he is doing. Can I compliment that? Because God says it's not good for the man to be alone. I'll give him help. It means that he wasn't doing a good job. Yet the only time a man needs help is when he's doing something. If he ain't doing nothing, then you can help him. Oh, do I have a witness here? Do I answer? Grants at all. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. So, 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 hear what happens. Once a person is accepted as the leader in any arena, he takes on or she takes on without even knowing it the role of father, even a female. Why? Because whoever leads delivers the DNA of that group. All the, 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 the nine months that the, 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 the woman carries the, the child, uh, do you know it's really the man's DNA that defines the child? More than 90% of your DNA is your father's contribution. In other words, no matter where you try, you will look just like your father. You will behave just like your father unless there's the intervention of Holy Spirit. Huh? Well, hear this. If in my formative years, my father impacted me Positively, then without fear of contradiction, I can tell you I will be more accepting of a leader, male or female, because I trusted my father. And I could only trust my father, or I could only learn from my father based on that trust. If I did not trust my father because he did a cruel thing to me, or he did a, 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 a very uh, obnoxious uh, way of, of, of treating me or of training me, or of bringing me up. If I saw him really mess up uh, my mother and mess up my brothers and, and all of them and he had his own home down the, another home down the road and he spent all the money on them. They went to university and look us, we got nothing. 
When he was home by us, he drank out all the money every fortnight. He said, nobody rub shop. When he married the woman down there, oh boy, he went and get big work. And spent money on all them. And he had big cars, he used to splash water and we. In other words, no, when I come into an arena and I did not forgive him, I will never trust my leader. Well, don't talk about if I was in another church and pastor messed me up. When I come to this next church, mm -mm. I can't trust them. And if I cannot trust somebody, I cannot learn what they're teaching me. Because I will blow like an like a, 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 um, a anti-aircraft gun operator. Everything they say, boom, boom, I'll shoot it out of the air. I will be in an arena in a, an accusative, argumentative mood. And I'll never learn. That's what you want from me. So take my heart. Good evening. Here we are once again on the seventh night of School of the Prophets, level two, module four. Now, this is a different type of interview. I'm not going to be interviewing him. This is Brother Stephen Singh, and he wrote something as a tribute to the Apostle Vivian in terms of what this School of the Prophets means to him. Brother Singh, you just read it out. Okay, hearing this teaching from the Apostle has really made me open my mind and my heart to many things in life. In this module, he refers it to the missing link, but I, I have added an S to it. For, for me, it's been the missing links. As a child growing up, there was a lot of battles that affected me, and without the right money, mentoring, it became worse. So for me, it's a privilege to come and sit under the apostle for the School of Prophets. I have gained a lot of experience by his teaching. It's a pleasure being in the presence. Thank you, Apostle Vivian Duncan, and your ministry for everything. Love, Stephen Singh. So there you have it, Brother Stephen Singh, speaking from his heart on what mentoring the missing links Thank did you, for him. Destiny anointing oil. Uh, every time we have come on the set, we have anointed our hands with destiny anointed oil and released a word. To you that you would receive by faith what God has for you. Amen. David said in Psalm 31, my times are in God's hands. Lord, you know the various segments of my life. But he started that by saying, I trust you, Lord. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. I'm prophesying to you right now, the person who has been waning in your trust in God. You started up the year, and not just the year, but you started up your uh, life in Christ. I mean, gone whole. Emotions were right. I mean, you just running after God. Anything you heard the pastor say, you went after it and it came. But there seems to be a slowdown right now. And because of the slowdown, your trust is waning. I'm here to release this anointing to you for understanding that when you cannot trace God, when you cannot uh, predict what he's going to do next, you still need to trust him. When you cannot trace his hands, trust his heart. I release it to you right now. And I decree you'll get back to the house of God. Get back to church. Get back in ministry if you have not left the house of God. Get back into the word of God, reading and meditating. If you have put down your Bible, receive it right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And I'm telling you, you need to come to Divine Destiny Worship Center this Sunday. Whether you live in the Southland, Deep South, go to Faisabad. Central, go to Shagornas. In Far East, Go to Sangre Grande, and certainly anywhere else in the country, you can come to Diego Martin, the headquarters, and you're going to have a restoration with God. Amen. Okay, well, this is the end of February, and soon we'll begin March. The month of March is a powerful time for us because 
Easter weekend, Easter weekend, beginning from Holy Thursday night at 10 p.m., we enter into a 20-hour worship and deliverance session. 20 hours of worship and deliverance under the theme, Storming the Gates. We are going from 10 p.m. right until, uh, on Holy Thursday night, right until 6.30 p.m. on Good Friday. From 10 to 3, we are storming the midnight gate, breaking the powers of witchcraft. From 4 until 6.30 a.m. on Good Friday, we are storming the morning gate. That's when joy returns. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And from 9 until 1, we are storming the midday gate. That's when we're going to deal with family matters, bringing deliverance, like the woman who, who came to meet Jesus at the well, she went at midday. She was not supposed to go at midday, but we're going to check out why. And then from 4 until 6.30, we storm the evening gate, which talks about the time for rewards, the time for wages, the time to stop toiling. And that's the time we're going to be talking about wealth thinking, about the power of the seed and all of that. All of that is going to be done within a 20-hour period from 10 p.m. on the 20th, uh, that's the 24th, yeah? Thursday the 24th, Holy Thursday night, right down to 6.30 p.m. on Friday the 25th, which is Good Friday. Amen? Uh, we just want you to prepare yourself for that. It's going to be staged at the Headquarters in Diego Martin, but sent by live stream to all our branches. Amen. And don't forget, right through the week, we are on air in the media. Uh, on Monday, we are on 98.1 with It's Your Date with Destiny at 9 p.m. On Tuesday, we are on 107.1 FM, The Word with Living the More Abundant Life at 9.30 p.m. And on Fridays, we are on 98.1 again at 3 p.m. with It's Your Date with Destiny, the daytime version. I like how uh, Brother Carlin says it. And it's Ask Pastor Gemma. Amen? Those who want to be part of the... Uh, storming the midnight gate into storming the morning gate and you are looking to share in the breakfast that we'll be having we want you to call and register and you will be told how much is the down payment amen so until we meet again i'm a first vivian duncan declaring to you you began life as a winner don't live it as a victim or die as a loser you're a god idea because when god made you he had destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet again. Amen. Continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.